Morning Atlantis. Hopefully Steve and the rest of the crew enjoyed that music. Thanks, Gamer. We certainly did. We're looking forward to a good day at joining up with the ISS. This is Mission Control Houston at a distance of 51 statute miles away. This is Atlantis' first view of the International Space Station, a gleaming star off on the uh, distant horizon, and the destination for Atlantis' five crew members that they will reach uh, just under four hours from now with a link-up scheduled uh, just off the southwest coast of South America at 9.53 p.m. Central Time. A breathtaking view of the shuttle Atlantis from the elbow camera of the Canadarm2 as Commander Steve Lindsay manually flies Atlantis toward the velocity vector toward a point about 300 feet directly in front of the International Space Station. The two craft are currently passing just off the coast of China. We'll take it, and we are getting some beautiful video down here. You all have a beautiful orbiter. Great. This view now from the International Space Station uh, as the uh, cameras on the uh, robotic arm scan the payload bay of Atlantis looking straight down at the Quest airlock and the very rear of the uh, orbiter itself now just uh, 258 feet away from a docking to the station. You're looking right down uh, at the top of Quest, the uh, equipment lock uh, on the right, the crew lock on the left with the hatch through which Mike Gernhardt and Jim Riley will exit uh, during the third spacewalk of this mission. Now you're looking at the four high-pressure gas tanks in the payload bay and the orbiter docking system. The uh, outer ring of that uh, docking system will make contact with the uh, docking port on the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station about 25 minutes from now. This is Mission Control Houston as Atlantis continues its approach. Uh, this view again from the Canadarm2 uh, elbow camera showing the shadow of the uh, P6 solar arrays as uh, they track across the open payload bay of Atlantis. Atlantis was the same uh, vehicle that uh, made the first link up to the Mir space station on the STS-71 mission back in June of 1995, has made repeated dockings to both uh, the Mir and the International Space Station. Tonight, uh, Commander Steve Lindsay uh, executing a textbook approach to a link up uh, with the facility for the start of seven days of docked operations, delivering the airlock quest and four high-pressure gas tanks, uh, which will provide both an environmental enhancement to the space station, as well as uh, the environmental capability to conduct uh, spacewalks from the station for future station assembly without the presence of a space shuttle required. This view through the centerline camera mounted in the orbiter docking system. This view from Atlantis uh, showing the docking port, uh, the cylindrical uh, docking port uh, on the forward end of the Destiny Laboratory to which uh, Steve Lindsay will uh, link up uh, Atlantis to just a few minutes from now. Uh, the docking is running just a few minutes behind schedule but is of no consequence uh, because there is no prescribed time required for the docking uh, since uh, communications are established uh, through the International Space Station apart from Russian ground stations.
Docking confirmed. Both vehicles in free drift. In free drift. Highway speed flashing lights. Houston copies and confirms. Good capture. Docking occurring over the northeast coast of South America at 10.08 p.m. Central Time. Atlantis has returned to the International Space Station to deliver the new airlock quest. Our first view of Commander Steve Lindsay since the uh, launch from the Kennedy Space Center early Thursday morning as he waves uh, through the hatch leading uh, into the tunnel to the Destiny Laboratory at uh, his crew members. The Expedition 2 crew on the other side of that hatch, uh, Jim Voss, Susan Helms, and Commander Yuri Usachov. There will be just a few minutes here while uh, pressure between the uh, two hatches uh, equalizes uh, to enable uh, Lindsay to open the hatch and uh, have the eight crew members greet one another for the first time at the beginning of one week of docked operations. This view uh, through the uh, porthole uh, on the uh, pressurized mating adapter hatch, which will swing open uh, a short time from now, this hatch leading uh, into the small uh, vestibule or tunnel uh, that leads from the orbiter docking system into the Destiny Laboratory. A good view of Commander Yuri Usachov on the left, Flight Engineer Susan Helms, and back inside Destiny, uh, Jim Voss. The two crews are just moments away from uh, being given a final go-ahead to open the hatches and greet one another prior to the start of a review of spacewalking procedures to be conducted Saturday night uh, between uh, Mike Gernhardt and Jim Riley in the assistance of the installation of the airlock quest on the starboard berthing port of the unity module of the station. Now we're inside Destiny with a space station KU downlink capability as Jim Voss uh, inspects uh, some of the uh, equipment inside Destiny. Susan Helms behind him as she works to assist Usachov in the opening of the hatches for the initial greetings between the two crews. Commander Steve Lindsay reporting uh, that the uh, he is currently uh, beginning the procedure to, to open the hatch uh, between uh, Atlantis and the International Space Station. All the crew members now uh, inside the Destiny Laboratory greeting one another. The hatches uh, between the two spacecraft swung open at uh, 12 midnight, precisely 12 midnight central time. This is now uh, downlink uh, through the Atlantis uh, television system showing uh, Commander Yuri Usachov in his 128th day in space. 
leading uh, the Expedition 2 crew uh, in this second uh, increment on uh, the permanent uh, human occupation of space. Houston, we're back with you on board in the lab. Okay, we're doing our EVA briefing right now. As you move from left to right on your screen, uh, Jim Voss, Susan Helms, Mike Gernhardt, Charlie Hobaugh, Jim Riley, Steve Lindsay on the far right, and with his back to the camera, uh, Station Commander Yuri Usachov, as they conduct a spacewalk procedures briefing prior to a dress rehearsal of twin robotics operations by Janet Cavandi and Susan Helms that will mimic all of the procedures to be followed late tonight when they uh, swing both of the robot arms, uh, one on the shuttle, one on the station, into motion in support of the spacewalk by uh, Bernhard and Riley, the first of three such spacewalks planned for this mission. The first two spacewalks to be staged out of the shuttle external airlock, which is uh, right uh, behind the orbiter docking system, now currently linked to the station. The third spacewalk to be conducted out of the newly installed and activated uh, station airlock named Quest, which will be installed on the Unity module of the International Space Station early Sunday morning. Houston Alpha. Go ahead. Sandy, we are ready to start the airlock grapple dry run, and we're in step one right now. That's great, we're watching. And not only did those guys bring us some fish. Go ahead. Hang on a second. Yeah, you don't need to do one, two, or three. You can start in step four for that procedure. Yeah, we just needed to set up our cameras, which we do by step one. But yeah, we, we'll see that we'll go into step four. Okay, and you were saying? Just that not only did they bring us fresh food, they brought us some fresh camera views as well. I copy that. I bet you like the food better. This view from the elbow camera of the Canadarm2 showing uh, the 56-foot-long uh, uh, Canadian-built uh, robotic arm for the International Space Station uh, now in motion as Atlantis and the International Space Station pass over the southeastern Indian Ocean approaching the west coast of Australia. An excellent view of uh, the rear of Atlantis's cargo bay and the airlock quest. You're looking at the equipment lock portion of that 18-foot-long uh, airlock as it sits nestled at the rear of Atlantis's cargo bay. The uh, and now a view uh, from the. Uh, wrist camera on the Canadian built robot arm looking straight down at uh, the very top of the airlock itself. Uh, at the very rear of the airlock is the so-called shower cap, uh, the protective thermal covering that is covering the uh, common berthing mechanism, the passive common berthing passive common berthing mechanism, uh, which will be uh, latched onto the Unity module's active common berthing mechanism to form a tight seal, uh, the two modules then to be bolted together by a series of 16 bolts once the airlock is installed on the starboard berthing port of Unity early Sunday morning. This is a uh, nice view as the uh, docked configuration of the shuttle and the station flies uh, northeasterly across the southern Pacific Ocean, both uh, robot arms uh, in motion. The station's robot arm with a light providing uh, lighting to the airlock during the survey and the uh, shuttle's robotic arm uh, being moved again to position for a calibration test for the space vision system. 
The station's robotic arm is being operated uh, from a robotic workstation inside the Destiny Laboratory to which it is currently uh, attached. And the station's, uh, the shuttle's robotic arm is being co uh, controlled from the flight deck of Atlantis. Uh, the views out the back windows obviously blocked by the station itself, thus the requirement for uh, ensuring that the calibration of the space vision system is uh, completed before actual uh, arm operations for the installation of the airlock uh, commences on the next crew day. In Atlantis, the uh, ODS hatch is closed, and uh, ISS crew is still working on uh, some of the other interim address steps. We copy, and Steve, you have a go to proceed with the 10-2 depress. 